welcome back to Cordal and Boots. Uh, today we are going to discuss about the topic, uh, how to create additional users in an EC2 instance. So this is, uh, I'm going to explain this in a Linux based operating system. So I'll use Amazon AMI uh, and show this example. Uh, but this, the same is applicable in uh, like Red Hat, Ubuntu or any other Linux uh, operating systems. Okay, so uh, let me give a background. So when we create an EC2 instance, a Linux uh, EC2 instance, so by default, there will be one user account in that instance, okay? So in majority of the Linux operating system systems, it will be the default username will be EC2-user, okay? So, but in, in cases like, I mean, if the OS is CentOS, then sometimes, I mean, the by default user will be CentOS. This, this AMI is provided by CentOS, that's why they're giving the default OS as CentOS. In uh, case of Ubuntu, the default user is Ubuntu. So depending upon the type of operating system, uh, the user may change, the default user may change, but there will be one default user in that system, okay? And this user will be uh, having super privileges. That means, I mean, basically all these users are by default pseudo user, okay? So the key that we have is to log in as this particular user and all these users, basically whatever user uh, or whatever is the default user, it will have pseudo privilege, okay? So there will be scenarios where we will need to provision EC2 instance and give it to some other people and we don't need to give, uh, we don't want to give uh, supervisor privileges uh, to the user that we are giving to the other users, okay? So basically the requirement is how to create additional users in an EC2 instance how to create non-pseudo so because users who doesn't have super user access uh, users in ec2 instance and also there will be some other scenarios where we don't want to share the key the private key that we have okay so we may we don't want to basically by default there will be only one user login and that one user login will be through the key that we have the ec2 key pair that we have created using the console but let's say uh, if we are using the same key for multiple instances that is provisioned in the same account okay we don't want to we, we want to change the key so then uh, we'll have to create a new key pair and use it in this machine right so in a separate user so in all these scenarios we'll have to create additional users so what we will do is i'll i'll show in by uh, in one of the ec2 instance so this is uh, an existing ec2 instance as i explained the default user is EC2 user, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an additional user, sudo user add, user add is the command. As I am executing from EC2 user, I have to use sudo command. If I'm root, executing it from root user, I don't need to add this user add, com I mean a sudo command. I'm going to create user one, zero 01, okay? Okay, so now if you see, user zero 01 got created, but how will we log in as user 01 okay because we have not set any password we have not created any key pair for this user 01 and one more thing by default password authentication will be disabled in ec2 user okay i'll explain that in a separate video but here we'll be explaining about how to enable how to create new user so now if i want to basically switch or log switch to this user i'll use sudo su hyphen user 01 okay you see now it is pwd i i mean the user home directory of user 01 who am i it's i am user 01 so now i'll explain how to enable login access to this user okay this is a normal user this does not have super user privilege so what i'll do is i'll have to create an ssh key pair for that i'll use the command ssh hyphen key gen okay hyphen t r s a Okay, I'm going to create, using the SSH keygen command, I'm going to create an RSA key pair. Okay, so it is going to generate an RSA key pair and by default, the key is going to get saved. Okay, it is asking me where is the location to save this key. So this ID underscore RSA has the private key. Okay, so there will be ID underscore RSA, RSA dot TUB that has the public key. Okay, so I am okay with the default location. I'll Okay, so it created the dot SSH directory. Now it is asking me for a passphrase. Okay, so this is like an additional security mechanism to 
basically lock the key the key the private key further with a password so if you don't want to give it's an optional thing you can give leave it empty also i'm going to leave it empty and press enter so it's asking again enter okay now you see it basically created a public key here id underscore rsa dot pub so we it created two files here so a folder dot ssh id underscore rsa id underscore rsa dot pub so this is the key pair okay so it has private key and public key now what we need is we need to go inside cd.ssh okay so here if you see you can see two files one is id underscore rsa second is id underscore rsa dot pub now we need to populate this id underscore rsa dot pub to another file called authorized keys okay so scat id underscore rsa dot pub to aut authorized okay now if you see we have a file authorized keys and cat the file content if you see this has the content of what we have created here okay it's a public key now what we need is we need to do one more thing okay so we need to change the permission of this particular file okay so this particular file need to be 600 the permission has to be 600 so I am going to change ch mode 600 to authorized keys okay so now and maybe we can delete this id underscore rsa dot pub i will not delete it right now but maybe i will move it from here okay because it is not really required here mv id underscore rsa dot pub to i am moving into home directory now id underscore rsa is the private key okay so this is in dot pem format this is the public key so what we can do is this file maybe we can take it out from this machine okay and then we can use it for the login so cp hyphen r okay so because right now at present we don't have login access to this machine right so i will copy this public private key to a temp, temp direct because slash tmp is a directory in linux which can be accessed by any other user so at present we have login access using ec2 user right so uh, i will not be able to access the files of user one using ec2 user so what i'll do is i'll copy the private key to slash temp temporarily so i'll go to slash tmp slash tmp then i here you see this file okay so this file is right now owned by user one for temporarily what i'll do is i'll just give all permission to id underscore rsa so that the other guy can access other guy means basically our ec2 user can access now i'll use my win scp okay so i have already logged into this machine i navigate to slash tmp so okay so here i have id underscore rsa okay so what i'll do is i'll basically i'll be i'll i'll download it to i'll download it to this machine okay ID underscore rsa dot pub i'll download it to this machine okay so i have now this file i'm going to rename this file to dot pem because this is my pem file the private key okay now after copying this what i'll do is i'll delete it from here rm id underscore rsa i deleted this now because we should we should not keep that private key in the slash tmp location okay so now if you go to dot ssh from here also i will delete okay but ensure you have kept this file secure okay because if you lose it you will not be able to regenerate it again so now i will use now we have created a user created a key pair different key pair we will use a software called puttygen this can be downloaded online so what we need is we need to convert this private key to private key to what uh, private key to ppk format so for that what we need is uh, no let's select the files we will download this all files not showing up that file yeah it's there in this here 
ID underscore RSA dot web. Load this file. Okay. Now this because putty for logging in using putty, we need this PEM file to be converted to PPK file. So for converting PEM to PPK, we can use it. We can convert it using a tool called putty gen. Okay. So there you can load the private key and convert it to save private key. Okay. So here if I save private key uh, without a passphrase, it is fine. I can say I need it in new key and the format is PPK, putty private key. Okay. So now you see it got saved as PPK file. Now what we need is let's try to log into this machine using the user 01. Okay. So I got the IP address. Now I'll paste it here. So in the SSH auth credentials, private key authentication. So here is the new key I'm loading open. Okay. Username I'll put user 01. Let's see whether the login happens. Yes. Okay. So login happened. So just like I'm in the easy to user, I log into user 01 directly. Okay. You can see the user 01. Now let's try to use sudo. Okay. You see password for user 01. Okay. So I don't have password because there is no password and it is not added to the sudo address as well. So there is no sudo access for this machine. Okay. For this user, for this user, there is no sudo access for this user. Okay. So this is uh, a non, non sudo user. So you can share this user with somebody else. You can share this key with someone else if you want to enable access without sharing the root credential or basically the credential which has sudo access. Okay. Now, okay, then second thing, let's say if you want to enable sudo access, what is required? So that is also simple. So if you see there is a file, I am in easy to user, I am just logging in as root su hyphen visudo, visudo, okay, type visudo. This will open the sudo s file, okay. You can see if you scroll down at the end you can see here you just need to add the entry for whom you just need to add the entry for for the user 01 okay let's say if i am adding user 01 then just copy what you have over here okay all all okay so one more thing okay all all and because you basically need to add it without asking for password right because we don't have a password for this user so we need to add this as well okay all all means this user can execute as any user and any commands without password okay so i okay this is escape colon sorry cancel mm, yeah escape colon wq Okay, so the advantage of VA, so never ever edit this file uh, using VA command. The reason is VA sudo, the advantage of VA sudo is it validates the file before saving it. If there is any problem, what it will have, what will happen is it will not allow you to save the corrupted file or file with wrong entry. Okay, so never ever try to open using VA. It allows you open, open the file with VA, but if there is some problem, it will allow saving you without checking and you will end up in problem because if you lose the sudo access right so let's say something goes wrong with the file you will use the complete sudo access to this machine okay then ec2 user won't be able to perform anything using the uh, sudo command so it's kind of again going to be like a broken gate we'll have to again perform the recovery operation something like what we have explained in the previous video okay so now uh, based on this configuration we have sudo access in, uh, enabled on the user 01 so if I type sudo su hyphen again here if you see now user 01 has sudo access you see now we have enabled sudo access to user 01 there is also an option to basically enable sudo access for specific commands okay instead of enabling the full sudo we can enable sudo for specific commands so that is also possible by uh, using the same VA sudo and there instead of giving all we can specify the specific commands I'm not going to explain that here but it is possible okay so I hope uh, this video is useful so uh, feel free to comment below this video if you have any questions uh, 
keep uh, subscri subscribe to this channel if for more uh, videos interesting videos like this thank you thank you for watching this video